so hi hello we have completed discussion on the general account and parallel structure in vocalia here we will be seeing the modes of reproduction in vocalia we have already seen in the previous lecture that in the same thallus adjacent to each other we can see the female reproductive structure called oogonium which is a spherical body with a beak then the elongated antheridium which is the male reproductive structure which is also on the same thallus adjacent to each other you can see that during the maturity and the, at the time of sexual i mean sexual reproduction the antheridial branch will be elongating and it will be forming a septum okay and this single portion is the antheridium after this septum before that this a vegetative thallus and after the septum only antheridium is seen this we will see when we discuss the sexual reproduction now coming uh, to the reproductive modes before that just see this thing once again because this is the image that you will be drawing in the exam because this is a uh, like pencil friendly drawing which is easy, easy to draw you have to show the posterized branch and erect branch you have to show the central vacuole you have to show uh, the chloroplast i mean chromatophores not chloroplast chromatophores uh, that is a modified form of chloroplast then antheridia ugonia etc and uh, this is the sexual and asexual cycle first we will see vegetativity fragmentation in the upcoming uh, like slides then we will see asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction said very simple thing and easy to draw a genus we will see first vegetative uh, reproduction in this this is very simple one particular fragment will be cut off from the thallus and this particular fragment will be falling on the substratum and that will be forming a new thalli okay that particular septum formation will be due to an injury or uh, any kind of herbivore chewing the algae or any reason if any injury is formed from that particular area a septum will be formed and the uh, falling of area that fragment will be forming a new thallus now coming to asexual reproduction it, it is happening uh, during the time of favorable circumstances as in other algae during the spring and summer season you can see uh, different modes of asexual reproduction the most common form is the formation of symzoospores during the reproductive maturity that is during the time of asexual reproduction what will happen is that the particular uh, thallus which is going to bear the zoospore will be accumulating the protoplasm at the apical side of the filament the pro you can see that at the apical side of the filament the particular protoplasm is accumulated in that there will be a dense amount of uh, nuclei and chromatophore and when the time of release of this syn zoospore you can see that the nuclei will be coming to the uh, periphery area outer area and the chromatophores this black dots that will be moving to the inside area you can see if i am taking a cross section of this thing this is the uh, zoospore surface you can see the nuclei came to the surface or periphery and the chromatophores uh, has gone to the bottom or the towards the central uh, area the chromatophore will be moving uh, but in the case of vegetative thallus this is the opposite nuclei will be uh, at the towards the vacuole and the chromatophore will be towards the periphery in the case of vegetative thallus but this is the condition in uh, the time of asexual reproduction so what will happen this particular protoplasm will be concentrating in this particular area and a septum will be formed and this particular uh, like branch or this particular fragment is called the sporangium zoosporangium and this particular zoosporangium will be shrinking its protoplast and squeezing it and through an aperture formed at the top of the or the or at the epic, uh, effects of the particular uh, zoosporangium this particular syn zoospore will be released outside okay and at the time of its release from each nuclei area is each from each nuclear region you can see a biflagella is formed then it will be releasing outside and it will be swimming for some time okay actually it is released during early morning hours in the case of okeria and it will be swimming for around 15 minutes then it will be settling on a suitable substratum and uh, the flagella will be removed after it is settled on the particular substratum then a germ tube will be uh, forming from this particular uh, synzoospore and that germ tube will be elongating and forming a new thalli okay this is the case of asexual reproduction if i am cutting here if i am cutting here and taking a cross section 
uh, will be getting this particular image there is a central hollow vacuole and on the i'm taking a piece okay i'm taking a piece from here and here okay. then you can see chromatophores and nuclei in the case of vegetative condition before the formation of syngospore nuclei was towards the vacuole and the chromatophores was towards the periphery but during the case of syngospores chromatophore is uh, has come to the uh, vacuolar side and you can see the nuclei is coming from the uh, nuclei is coming to the periphery and flagella is arising from each nuclei okay so this is the case of asexual liberation through syngospore i have given the not here and one more point that you have to remember is some botanists call it as a compound zoospore why why compound zoospore this, this can be a short note question as well because normally we see that in the case of eulogonium or any other uh, alga that we have discussed we, we saw that in the case of such filamentous uh, thalli from each cell there will be only one nuclei and that uh, particular nuclei will be uh, like uh, doing some like meiotic division and haploid zoospores etc will be formed but in the case of this particular in the case of eudogonia if you remember from one particular zoosporangium there were uh, two partic uh, two uh, androzoids got released because that particular nuclei got divided into two but here it is not happening from one particular zoosporangium the entire protoplasm the entire protoplasm of this particular zoosporangium got converted into a single zoospore so from one single zoosporangium one single zoospore will be released and that particular zoospore will be having many nuclei it is not uh, uh, like previous algae where each nuclei will be forming an uh, a new new zoospore it's not like that from each uh, like from a single zoosporangium only one single zoospore is released and that is having multiple nuclei and uh, multiple chromatophore that's why since it is having multiple nuclei instead of forming different different uh, like zoospores that's why it is called a compound zoospore by some botanist we have mentioned it here yeah now coming to asexual reproduction through a planospores this is the same as in the case of syngospore only one difference this is the a planospore you can see the similar structure of a zoosporangium this is the a planosporangium okay a planosporangium not a planosporangium a planosporangium a planosporangium only difference is that it is not having a uh, flagella it is not moving in the case of uh, marine algae marine vocalia species like uh, vocalia hameta you can see this a planospore formation and only some species okay some species uh, shows this particular uh, syngospore formation that is during the favorable condition and even during the spring and summer season if there is some drought or some kind of situation happens in some species like vocalia hameta you can see the formation of uh, this particular a planospore and the set third case will be the formation of echinase formation see this is the echinase that i will be showing in the next slide as well you can see a chain like uh, cell formation we are going to see it here echinases are formed by the division of this is the next form of reproduction sexual reproduction that is through echinases echinases are formed by the division of filaments this was a single thallus echinoscepta now different different filaments or different different septa has been cut here uh, filaments into small segments by a thin gelatinous wall this is a thin gelatinous wall why to prevent water loss nutrient loss etc during unfavorable conditions echinases are so what are echinases echinases are small multinucleate okay each segment is having multi nuclei many nucleus are there we know that uh, that is the feature of the thallus of vocalia just a segment of thick gelatinous wall is formed here and it is having multi nuclei and thick walled segments that are known as also known as echinates or cyst or uh, hypnospores all are same then this particular and one more feature this particular chain like formation you can see one echinate or cyst here one echinate here one echinate here this kind of uh, chain the formation of uh, like filaments that resembles the genus of gongrosera algae okay there is a uh, there is an algal genus called gongrosera algae and this part uh, its particular structure is like this in the chained filament uh, formation so that's why this particular stage of this echinate formation in vocalia during asexual reproduction that is this stage is called gongrosera stage this can be a short knot for civil service or ifs you have to draw this figure and during the time of when the unfavorable situations are over this particular uh, echinate will germinate and that will be forming uh, this particular hypnospore outside and this particular hypnospore will be germinating and will be forming a germ tube which will be finally uh, converting itself into a new thallus of vocalia 
So this is about the sexual reproduction in work area. Now coming to the sexual reproduction in work area. This is very simple. Uh, you have to remember a few things. Uh, you can see that in this particular thalli, a particular thallus will be bearing an anteridia or the male reproductive structure and a uh, like oogonium, which is a female reproductive structure. Now coming to the formation. At the base of this anteridial branch, consider this as the anteridial branch where anteridia is going to be uh, originated. At the base of this anteridial branch, a small protuberance or anteridial initial which initially, initially develops just like you can see here. Similarly, small protuberance may occur here and that will be accumulating cytoplasm. Okay, it was initially a protuberance, small protuberance. It started accumulating uh, uh, cytoplasm and th this will be uh, like elongating. This particular region will be elongating and this particular elongation will uh, finally uh, like take a horn shape okay this will take a horn shape and a septum will be formed and the septum will be formed here okay you can see a septum will be formed here this particular septum uh, after the septum will be the anteridium before that this is a vegetative thallus and here after septum it will be having a dense cytoplasm that will be called an anteridium this will be having an aggregation of nucleus and chromatophores in this apical region uh, yeah so in this anteridium, the nuclei, there are many nuclei, these nuclei will again divide to form many other nuclei through uh, mitosis and that will give rise to anthrozooids, okay, biflagellated and spindle shaped anthrozooids, okay. So, and one feature of this particular anthrozooid is that its flagella are dissimilar. One is having whiplash condition and other is having pincel condition. So, once the anteridia uh, is bending and it is touching the ogonial bead the septum uh, at the surface will be dissolving both at the anteridian and uh, anthrozoid i mean both at the anteridian and ogonium and this anthrozoid will be released towards the ogonium now coming to ogonial development uh, when we are discussing about ogonial development you can see that initially it was an ogonial initial at the uh, base of this particular thallus okay now it has accumulated cytoplasm nuclei chromatophore etc uh, actually, the, in the initial stage, one point you have to remember, initial stage it was not having chromatophore, but it was initially having only like an abundant protoplasm with multiple nuclei. Uh, it, it, is, it initially lacks the chromatophore. This condition is called wonderplasm. Okay. Finally, this particular ogonial uh, like initial or the uh, wonderplasm will bulge out. Okay. It will bulge out from this ogonial initial this will be accumulating more protoplasm and it will eventually take a globular shape okay and at that time more chromatophore after attaining this globular shape more chromatophore will be accumulating in this area and a septum will be formed to cut off from the or differentiate itself from the main thallus so at that time of reproduction this anteridial branch will be coming and contacting the ugonial beak the ugonial beak ruptures and the, when the ugonial beak uh, ruptures a small amount of cytoplasm of this ugonium will be coming outside and some androzoids will be stuck in that particular cytoplasm okay then it will be moving towards the egg and it will be fertilizing the egg and a zygote will be formed when the zygote secretes a wall around itself for protection to overcome the unfor unfavorable circumstances an oo spore will be released this oo spore is, is, it is having a uh, diploid nuclei this will be undergoing meiosis this particular uh, like zoospore will be undergoing uh, meiosis and it will be forming four haploid nuclei these haploid nuclei will again divide meiotically and mitotically and that will be forming a multinucleated new thallus just like this okay so this is about the sexual reproduction and one thing i missed out that was regarding the fertilization time you know that ugonium was also having multiple amount of nuclei and multiple amount of chromatophore but just before fertilization except one nuclei the entire nuclei will be disintegrating only one will remain and that will be modifying itself into egg then finally one particular androzoid only one androzoid will be fusing that will be fusing and forming zygote zygote will be secreting a wall around itself that is called uh, then it will be called an oospore oospore will be waiting for some time to uh, overcome the unfavorable situation when the time for uh, germination has come it will be mitotically uh, I mean, it will be dividing meiotically and the haploid uh, nuclei will be formed that will be dividing meiotically and mitotically and forming the new thallus 
This is all about the reproduction in bacteria. Thank you.